Hey everyone, Tim Schofield here, and it's time to take a look at the Samsung DeX Station. It is a desktop experience dock, so what you can do is actually drop in your Galaxy S8 or S8 Plus and actually use it as a desktop. I'm going to go ahead and connect it to my monitor. Uh, also go ahead and show you guys real quick what's in the box, set it all up and get things going, and give a quick demonstration as well. So to begin, you'll see it runs off of HDMI UHD 4K, 100 megabit Ethernet, and 2 times USB 2.0. So on the back, you'll see here, USB 2.0, 2.0, Ethernet, HDMI, and USB Type-C as well. So let's go ahead and open this guy up and real quick, see what all comes in this box. And right away, you do have your docking station, which does have some wrapper on it. Um, on the back here, I'll talk about this in just a second. You have an adaptive fast charge, similar to the one that came with the Galaxy S8 Black right here, and then I believe this should be a USB Type-C cable, and it is. So USB Type-A to USB Type-C to charge, uh, charge your DeX docking station. Finally, you have a quick start guide in case you need to know how to do anything, and that's pretty much it. That would be everything in the box. So let's go ahead and grab our dock and take a close look at it. So on top here, you'll see a little bit of an arrow. So you really just have to push up, and it reveals that USB Type-C connector right there as well. Uh, down at the bottom, pretty much just FCC information. Here's a look at the back. So it looks like it has some vents or they may be speakers. I'm not exactly sure. I'll have to test that out in just a second. Finishing off, you have your two USB Type-A slots, your Ethernet slot, HDMI, and your USB Type-C for some charging. Okay, so I went ahead and grabbed my Galaxy S8. And also I connected my DeX to this monitor right here through HDMI. I plugged it in via USB Type-C. I also inputted my wireless mouse that I have right here and also connected a Bluetooth keyboard to my phone. So let's go ahead and test it out for the first time. I'm gonna press the power button on my monitor and then plug this guy in and we'll take a look at what actually happens to the device because it is plugged in, it should have power. It is charging the phone and it says, welcome to Samsung DeX. And it says start using DeX or switch to screen mirroring. So you have a couple options. You'll see here it says welcome to Samsung DeX as well. Tap start Samsung DeX on your phone to start. So I'm going to go ahead and press start Samsung DeX. And it looks like it powers off the screen right here. Brings our monitor to a Samsung DeX screen. And there we go. Here is our new desktop. All right, so let's run through a couple things. As you can see, I have a mouse right there moving around, obviously connected to this mouse, uh, which you will need. Uh, the screen completely shuts off right here, and if you press the power button on your Galaxy S8, which I will do right here, it will actually lock your desktop, and if you press the power button again, you'll see it takes you to whatever lock screen you have, so you can just go ahead and type in your preset lock screen to unlock your desktop. Now, see your notifications as a glance, at a glance, you'll see in the bottom right, they will show up, so you'll see I have a bunch of notifications, my Verizon LTE, all that stuff, expander, collapse, the menus, We'll talk about that in a second. Multitask easily. You'll find all of your open apps neatly lined up on the taskbar. And then here's a notice. Uh, just a bunch of stuff. I don't really know anything out of the order. Samsung DeX only supports FHD, so 1080p resolution. So some high resolution content may look a little different. And that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and hit start. And it says make sure all four corners of our monitor fit. Looks pretty good to me. I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. And there we go. So we're all ready to go. Looks like you can minimize and maximize information. If you tap on the date and time, you can bring up a specific calendar. I'm not going to do so at the moment. You have a drop up menu to actually go to those quick shortcuts. So if you wanted to go ahead and turn on Wi-Fi, if you didn't want to use specific uh, 4G LTE or not, I'll let you know you are connected to, there's that keyboard I'm connected to, audio, audio output. You can have it be your phone or the display device. So I have it as my phone. Let's go ahead and test and see if that was actually, those were actually speakers on the back. So to test this out, let's go into our app drawer. And I do want to make note that uh, the wheel on my mouse does work and I'm scrolling with it. Let's go into Chrome and you'll see it loads up Google. And here is a window. While it, while it is docked, you can actually resize this window any way you'd like to, vertically or horizontally, or you can go full screen as well if you'd like to. So what, with that said, let's try out the keyboard and go to youtube.com, brings up our mobile website, which we should be able to say, hey, let's request desktop website, because of course we are docked and would like to use it as a desktop. So you see it loads it up just fine, seems to scroll 
quickly as well. Uh, let me just go to one of my videos just to test out the speakers on the back of it. I wanna actually double check and see if those are speakers. So let's click on why not, Moto G5. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn up the media volume. And you'll see it is coming out of some speaker. Let's double check. And for those of you wondering, these are not speakers on the back. The sound is using the phone speakers, which does have a bit of a curve into it, so the sound will emit towards you when you have it in front of you. So it's not terrible sounding by any means, but of course you may want to consider some sort of external speakers, probably a Bluetooth speaker because it looks like you won't be able to access any, the um, headphone jack while it is plugged into your dock. Okay, now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's continue on. I'm gonna close out of the Chrome app and we'll take a look at our notifications down here. So you'll see I have a Gmail notification. So you'll see right here, you do have an email. I'm gonna close out of it and it goes away. Something else, using Samsung DeX. You can tap here to switch to screen monitoring. I'm not gonna do so at the moment. And then letting you know the Cubs, of course, are beating the Pittsburgh Pirates at the moment. Uh, let's try out a couple more things, why not? Let's go into our recent apps button. So you'll see you can have a close all button and it brings it up really quickly and you still have that home button. So if you jump into settings, the home button isn't necessarily as relevant. Oh, it looks like you do have to double click on any of these specific apps right here, my files. Uh, so let's see what happens if I press the home button right here. It minimizes all of your apps. And of course you can easily multitask with the multitasking button or you can open up these apps in that minimized tray right here and changing options looks like you don't have a lot of things you can change while it is docked a screen timeout lets you know probably when it will actually lock as well now i want to try and open up the camera and actually see what that does oh it works so you can still use your camera while you're docked and snap a picture look you're gonna have to move your dock of course but that's a, that's a little strange i don't really know why you would necessarily need to use your camera uh, so that means maybe Snapchat would work as well. Let's go ahead. I don't, actually don't think I have Snapchat loaded up on this device or at least signed in to say the least. Next up, let's try and load up a game. So here is Alto's Adventure. I'm going to put that to the side and actually send a text message real quick. So let's go ahead and load up the messages app that I have and let's compose a quick message. So you'll see I'm typing a text now to myself and I misspelled my own name. There we go. Hey, Tim press enter and it presses enter. I actually have to press the send button looks like. And there we go. So it loads up, hey Tim, sends it on off. And now what I'm gonna do is actually grab my phone and I did get that text message actually and I'm gonna text myself back. So I want you to go ahead and keep an eye on the screen. I'm gonna send a text and there you go. In the bottom right, it pops up. You can hit call, mark as read or reply. So if you hit reply, you don't even have to leave whatever app you're in. You can go ahead and press reply, go ahead and hit enter, and it sends it on off. Okay, let's go ahead and go up to this app now. And I don't know if I've actually loaded up Alto's Adventure. Uh, it seems like this app cannot be resized, which I guess kind of is what it is. I'm tapping to start and it doesn't look like it's doing anything. I'm gonna try my keyboard and that doesn't look like it's doing anything either. So a little unfortunate. There's a chance that some games may or may not work. As it said, it actually stated that when I loaded it on up. And it looks like Alto's Adventure might be one of them. I can go ahead and try another one. Let's try Asphalt 8. Asphalt 8 can't run. So that's what it says. It says that one cannot run at all. Maybe let's try Trusty Old uh, Pinochle. So if you want to play Pinochle, single deck or double deck, looks like that game works. So some games are going to work and other ones probably are not. Um, so let's go ahead and just go ahead and press a card and you'll see you can play just fine. And last, I want to go ahead and make a phone call. Uh, I will be doing a full review, so drop a comment and let me know what you'd like to see in a future video. Also, you can right click on apps and pin them to the taskbar. So if there's specific apps you want down at the bottom always, you can go ahead and pin those. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and call my own phone and hit the call button. And you see it loads on up. And I am now getting a phone call, as you can see, from this specific phone. And it automatically puts it on speaker. Hello? Hello? Yeah, there's going to be a feedback loop there. But anyways, you'll see it worked just fine. Got everything going. You can make calls and it automatically jumps into speakerphone. 
so you don't necessarily have to pick it up out of the specific dock. Finally, there's a quick screenshot button as well, so you can go ahead and take a quick screenshot and edit it if you'd like to. Let's go ahead and take one more and then press the draw button. And there you go, you can actually draw on whatever screenshot you took. So anyways, that's really about it. That would be the Samsung DeX application. Lots more to come, I'm gonna definitely utilize this day to day, give you guys some more impressions on it as well. So click that subscribe button, you can follow me on various social media. As always guys, thank you very much for watching.